On the news, health ministers in West Africa converge on Abuja for a 10th ordinary meeting of ECOWAS. Campaign on tobacco-free Nigeria launched. Another day of the African child. Hello there, and thanks for joining us on the NTA Network News for tonight. I am Fumi Wakama. Health ministers of the ECOWAS subregion are converging on Abuja to review and find solutions to the challenges of communicable diseases ravaging the sub-region. Acting President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo at the 18th Ordinary Meeting of the Ministers urged them to invest in efforts towards reduction of communicable diseases. State House correspondent Jide Unifade has that report. Never again must West African sub-region be taken unawares by the Ebola virus disease, Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo says, as he raises concern over the recent outbreak of the disease in Democratic Republic of Congo. The West African region must actively take steps to be prepared by establishing preventive measures to avoid its spread to the West African sub-region. Public health emergency preparedness should be a task that we are determined to achieve. Never again should West Africa be taken by surprise in such outbreaks as we experienced in 2014 during the Ebola virus outbreak with the colossal loss of lives and security threats to national survival. Acting President Oshimbajo observed the vision of the founding fathers to see a harmonized unified response to the expanding health challenges of the sub-region has proved to be daunting. Differences in language and systems and procedures have thrown up peculiar difficulties. And with a population of about 365 million, the region, he notes, has similarities of disease burden. No effort should be spared by the region in ensuring that strong, resilient health systems exist at country levels. The journey to the ideals set for this body three decades ago may therefore seem to be long and tortuous, but the destination is clearly within sight. The greater commitment being shown by all members to the common causes of the West African Health Organization, and indeed ECOWAS, and the great advantages in technology, and especially mobile telephony, will surely bridge the gap of time that has been lost in the past years. This meeting holds to set our priorities to address the shortage of human resources through tax shifting. Nigeria has already adopted a tax shifting policy. The Commission reaffirms its commitment to support the implementation of regional strategies on the fight against diseases and epidemics. The Assembly urged member states to make contributions in support of the efforts of the West African Health Organization towards the reduction or possible eradication of communicable diseases in the sub-region. In Abuja, Jude Onifade, NT News. And still staying with health matters, another health campaign is on in Nigeria as the country seeks to carry along citizens in promoting and protecting public health. The tobacco-free Nigeria launched by the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, is one that practitioners in the sector feel everyone should be part of. Salihu Abdullahi brings us that report. World Health Organization report put the number of people that die annually from passive smoking at 600,000. In Nigeria, 4.5 million adults, made up of 4.1 million men and half a million women, use tobacco products. Consequently, a large number of people inhale secondhand smoke. To protect such people and also discourage tobacco use, Nigeria launched the Tobacco Free Nigeria campaign to reawaken consciousness and mobilize support to actualize the full implementation of the National Tobacco Control Act 2015. Our effort today is to say, look, we must end this madness. Let us not be deceived by those who tell us, oh, we are creating jobs, we are creating wealth, we are creating prosperity. To me, it is poison arrow. Because it's only by using the same tactics of communication 
uh, that the tobacco industry uses that we have a small chance of countering their messages and winning over the lives of uh, children and adults. Experts at the launch stress that tobacco use is a major avoidable risk factor for non-communicable diseases such as hypertension, stroke, heart diseases, cancer, and diabetes mellitus. The message at this event is stop tobacco use by enlightening everyone in its dangers and support the National Tobacco Act to protect the country's present and future generations. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. And from health, we turn our attention to security. Improved budgetary allocation to the armed forces and its training institutions, as well as a synergy between the military, legislature, and civil society organizations have been advocated in tackling security challenges in the country. This was the submission of former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, during a lecture to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the National Defense College, Abuja. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma has that report. General Abdul Salami Abubakar was the third commandant of the National Defense College after its establishment in 1992. Sharing his thoughts on capacity building for defense management, the role of National Defense College, he said addressing the prevailing security situation in the country needs the understanding and support of all arms of government. I believe if uh, our politicians, our NGOs, and stakeholders in this country attend short courses in this uh, institute. They will have a better graph of security and understanding of nation building. In the last 25 years, the National Defense College has served as a think tank for the military, sister security agencies, and some government parastatus on national security and development policy formulation. It should also be a time to reflect on the achievement of this great institution in the past two and a half decades and project into the future of how the college could make more impact. The college is striving to improve its curriculum and facilities to deliver the appropriate strategic leadership training that will meet emerging security challenges in Nigeria in the next, shall I say, 25 years or 50 years. So far, the NDC has trained over 2,000 senior military officers and their contemporaries in the civil service. In Abuja, Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. And still staying with security, the police have warned communities, organizations and individuals to desist from acquiring illegal weapons under the guise of protecting themselves from attacks, saying firearms are still prohibited in the country. This was during the parade of 28 suspects arrested in seven states for various offences. Edino Justice brings us details. The offences range from kidnapping, illegal possession of firearms, to armed robbery and cattle rustling. The first spokesperson said the police, in its effort to get rid of criminals, sent out special tactical squad who arrested the suspects from Niger, Kano, Kaduna, Kogi, and Plateau states. Other states are Sokoto and the Federal Capital Territory. Items recovered include 10 AK-47 rifles, assorted locally fabricated rifles, 50 cows, and many rounds of life ammunition. CSB Jima urged the public to continue to give police information. Thank members of the public uh, in this state and equally across the federation for making useful information available to the Nigerian police. And we have put a lot of crime prevention and control strategy in place to ensure that everybody is safe. So there's nobody that have any excuse under the law to go and acquire prohibited firearms. One of the suspects who admitted his specialty in kidnapping teenagers in Abuja said he was lured into it by a friend. While another man, about 60 years old, said he got involved in trading weapons to defend his community. The first spokesperson who urged the public to always support law enforcement agencies said all the suspects will be charged to court. Aiding or justice. NTA News. 
elsewhere, 11 suspects have been paraded in Abuja for allegedly vandalizing armored cables belonging to the Abuja Electricity Distribution Company. The suspects were paraded before journalists by the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, FCT Command. Ola Inkawajo reports. Activity of vandals in various sectors of the economy has been a major setback in government's effort towards boosting the economy. This cuts across gas pipeline and electrical vandalism, resulting to shortage of electricity supply. The hand of the law caught up with some vandals based on constant surveillance by men of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, in line with its mandate of protecting public assets. The suspects were alleged to have stolen armored cables of the AEDC at the Central Business District area in Abuja on Tuesday. Based on further investigation, they led us to the middlemen who buy from them, we arrested those ones, and we also were able to get to where they sell these things. One of the suspects, Abubakar Sharif, made a confessional statement. It is because I want to have something to feed myself. That is why I engage in the act. Director of Risk and Compliance, Abuja Electricity Distribution Company, Collins Chaboka, puts the cost of the vandalized item at 3.5 million naira. Any person who comes forward with tangible information, uh, where we even make arrests like this one, ADC will reward them. NSCDC says the suspects will be charged to court on completion of the investigations. In Abuja, Online Kaujo, NTA News. The House of Representatives Hardcore Committee on Central Bank of Nigeria's Intervention Funds has commenced investigation into 1.3 trillion naira specifically meant for electricity distribution companies. It is with a view to investigating the level of compliance and with lending terms. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Amino reports. The ad hoc committee was mandated to investigate the disbursement of all intervention funds by the Central Bank of Nigeria from 2007 to date based on complaints by some stakeholders. The concern is on the disbursement processes, selection of beneficiaries and what they have used it for. It was another fund that was established four years prior to the discourse coming. So that's what we thought uh, you were asking us for information under, which is why we responded that no, we did not receive monies under that fund. Committee's chairman, Basi Ewa, frowns at the inability by the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria or his deputies to appear before the committee for explanation on the complaints and some documents. The documents show that 449 billion naira was remitted, while 802 billion naira is still outstanding out of the total amount. We must ensure that the funds are properly utilized. That is key. The impact must be felt by Nigerians. The committee fixed to 1st July for continuation of the investigative hearing with all stakeholders involved, including the attendance of the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and his management. From the National Assembly, Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. And as part of oversight functions, members of the Senate Committee on Industries have visited the Industrial Training Fund headquarters in JAS to assess the level of implementation of the 2016 budgetary allocation to the fund. Chairman of the committee, Senator Sam Egu, says over 39 billion naira was approved by the National Assembly in 2016. Kim Gott's report. The Industrial Training Fund, established in 1971, has the mandate in line with global best practices of providing, promoting and encouraging the acquisition of skills in industry and commerce with a view of generating a pool of indigenous trained manpower sufficient to meet the needs of both private and public sectors of the economy. The Senate Committee on Industry, led by its chairman, Senator Sam Egu, inspected ongoing projects at the ITF headquarters. Senator Egu said the National Assembly is committed in making beneficial appropriation for the growth of the economy. This oversight is to conduct an assessment on the level of judicious budgetary implementation by the fund, particularly the 2016 approved appropriation. 
Director General Industrial Training Fund, Joseph Ari, said in the last one year, the fund has scaled up efforts in equipping Nigerians with technical and vocational skills, realizing the successful implementation and achievement of the economic diversification program and other policies. The Director General said the fund initiated several programs that benefited over 115,000 Nigerians. It's currently owing billions as unpaid sewer supervisory and students allowances. We appeal to the National Assembly through our avowed committee on industry to reverse this trend in order to avert rampant picketing and harassment of the ITS staff across the country. The committee will visit other state area offices and training centers as a prelude to the 2018 budget defense to identify area of attention. In Joss, Kim Gotts, NTA News. And Nigeria is exploring ways of securing bank verification numbers, online transactions and vigilance to combat the increasing cases of cyber crimes. To this end, a Cyber World Conference is holding in Abuja to examine these issues. Abdullahi Suleiman Yaji reports. Even though Nigeria was not affected by the recent global attack ransomware, the country has its own share of cyber crimes bedeviling the nation's economy. That explains the convening of this meeting, tagged the Cyber World Conference. The initiative, which is the first of its kind in Nigeria, aims at addressing hacking of mails, malware attacks, and data breaches through interaction with telecommunication experts, the banking sector, and educational institutions, among others. Alerting people to be more vigilant and take better care of their BVN numbers and uh, their other coded uh, numbers available to them about their securities and their bank accounts mm -hmm. to get themselves insured against the activities of cyber criminals. We have to put this conference together in order to create awareness and bring people together to let them know that there's need to be involved for us to fight against cyber crime. The conference is expected to forward recommendations to government on how to further guard against cyber attacks. In Abuja, Abdullahi Suleiman Yaji, NTA News. You can watch this news live via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. 2,200 women graduate in various skills acquisition programs and economic ventures in Lagos as, part as African First Ladies commemorate Day of the African Child. We should bring you these and more after these messages. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being law-abiding citizens. Let's pepper them. So tell somebody to tell everybody to come join Maya, baby. And they bring too much sauce. No mega music talk. It's gonna be a mad over your ten. Well, where you know we are show stoppers. I am your host for the biggest show ever. To miss the stuff, I'm gonna miss everything. So join me, guys. Let's turn it up. We'll be storming across Nigeria. I won't be anywhere else. Everyone who is anyone is going to be there. All Nigerians, all these musicians. One big stage. Live and direct. No mega music tour all over Nigeria. So watch out because we they come. Let's go! It's the Glow Mega Music Tour with your favorite anchors and special guest stars. It's gonna be untamed. Text music and your preferred location to 207. Use 2000 Naira Glow Airtime in one month to stand in line for your free ticket. So what are you waiting for? The Glow Mega Music Tour. Glow Unlimited. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. 
she rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliamp battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. The Future Assured project of the wife of the president, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, is carrying out free medical screening and distribution of food items at various IDP camps while ensuring the economic empowerment of women through training and skill acquisition. In recognition of her efforts, wives of governors have lent their voices and support. In Kogi State, we feel the impact of Future Assured, especially in women and children. The Future Assured program of Mrs. Aisha Muhammad Bahari, the wife of the president, has been very assuring and still reassuring in Sokoto State. It has impacted positively in the areas of humanity, especially women and children. Supports the Future Assured initiative. Email programs at futureassured.org.ng. Future Assured, promoting and protecting the lives of Nigerian women and children. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. The FIFA Confederations Cup Russia 2017 on Quest Sports for the fan. Thanks for being there. You're still watching the NTA Network News. Wife of the President Aisha Muhammad Buhari says she will not rest on her oars until women in Nigeria are economically empowered and self-reliant. Mrs. Buhari stated this in a message to the graduation ceremony of 2,200 women in various skills acquisition programs and economic ventures in Lagos. State House correspondent Aliu Kabir reports. It was in November last year the Future Assured program of the wife of the President, Aisha Muhammad Buhari, in collaboration with the National Directorate of Employment, NDE, flagged of the training exercise of 2,200 women in various skills acquisition program in Lagos. Several months down the line, this is the result. I learned beading and stoning of grass. I've learned makeup and gilly, hair shine, different type of hair shine, like brighter look, then butterfly, rose, take a bow, and brighter hair tie. Those ones that don't have job, I can bring them around me to come and learn. If not her, all these beautiful displays you're seeing here won't be possible. The activities comprise this cosmetics making, such as soap, petroleum jelly, skin and hair cream, the catering and snacks making, hairdressing, tie and dye, tailoring, as well as bit stringing and makeup. While urging the beneficiaries to make the best use of the opportunity, the wife of the president, represented by the wife of the Lagos State Governor, Molale Ambode, explained that similar exercise was conducted in Kano, Katsina, and the Youth Education Empowerment in Adamawa, with a plan to be extended to all the 36 states of the Federation. The empowerment will help them to be more self-confident, put them in a position to assist their spouses in family upkeep. 
thereby making them more relevant in their respective homes. Thank the wife of the President, Commander-in-Chief, for empowering and for motivating our women all over Nigeria. Highlight of the event was the presentation of certificate to the 2,200 graduates in Lagos, Aliu Kabir, NTA News. And we turn our attention to party politics. Members of the People's Democratic Party PDP Governors Forum rose from their meeting in Abuja, restating commitment to uniting members of the party ahead of the 2019 elections. Political correspondent Abdullahi Gerobabrin Kudu reports. The Ayodele Fayoshe led PDP Governors Forum meeting came at the time when the party is waiting for the resolution of its crisis by the Supreme Court. The meeting, which had seven governors and some members of the Board of Trustees in attendance, reassured party members of their resolve to work together in the interests of the PDP and democracy. Believing that the PDP stay and stand united to win election in 2019, we are hopeful that the outcome of the court will further unite the party. There will be no winner, there will be no vanquish. We believe in the, in the PDP and we believe in the tomorrow of this party. The PDP factional crisis has been a prolonged one and is now before the Supreme Court. In Abuja, Abdullahi Gerpa Purunukudu, NTA News. In the meantime, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has presented certificates of registration to the five new political parties that have met the criteria for transition from political associations. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu assured the new political parties of equal status with all other political parties and that the Commission will extend to them rights and privileges of recognized political parties under the Constitution, the electoral law, as well as INEC regulations and guidelines. The INEC chairman, however, warned that the commission will continue to strictly monitor the activities of political parties and will not hesitate to apply sanctions against any violation of law governing the terms and conditions of registration. Rather, registration should be an opportunity to exercise the critical role of political parties in the best interest of our growing democracy. The parties so registered are Action Democratic Party ADP, All Democratic People's Movement ADPM, Advanced People's Democratic Alliance APDA, New Generation Party of Nigeria GNP, and Young Progressive Party YPP. Kaduna State Government has restructured some of its districts and village units heads across the 23 local government areas. This measure, the state government says, is to make governance of the districts and villages cost-effective. This has, however, generated diverse reactions from the public. Abdullahi Muhammad reports. There are 32 traditional rulers in Kaduna State. Ten are first-class chiefs, nine second-class, while 13 belong to the third class. There are, on the other hand, 390 district heads and more than 5,800 village heads. This overblotted number of districts and village heads have become a huge burden to the local government. In view of this, the Kaduna State government decided to restructure the overblotted number of districts and village heads and revert to 77 district heads and 1,400. 129 village heads. A lot of people celebrated the creation of these districts and a lot of people are not also happy about the dismantling of the districts. I advise the governor of Kaduna State to uh, review the issue. The Kaduna State Commissioner for Chieftaincy Affairs and Local Government, Japar Sani, emphasized that the restructuring of the traditional institutions will translate to an effective and cost-efficient system. As we are talking to you now, uh, about 85% of them had already received their backlog of two years, some two years, some less salaries in one instance. Uh, the 15% that are yet to receive theirs where well, those, at least with the cases of uh, wrong account number or BBN. 
Kaduna State Government reiterated its commitment towards discharging its responsibilities to all the greater chiefs and emirs. And as part of efforts to align its operations for effective and efficient service delivery and in line with the executive order signed by the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, the Federal Road Safety Corps has organized a strategic session for zonal commanding officers in Abuja. Aliu Tukur brings us details. The executive order E001, which was signed barely a month, is on promoting transparency and improving business environment in the country. Against this backdrop, the Federal Road Safety Corps held a strategic session in order to identify areas of operations requiring alignment to the executive order so as to achieve the Corps' strategic mandate. Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi says all hands must be on deck to pursue the goal of realizing the tenets of the executive order as the role of the Corps remains unquantifiable. There's no area in which stable development is more important than this executive order in terms of human welfare, that is transportation. Therefore, FRC goal is to ensure free and safe movement across the country. This executive order uh, 001 is effective from the end of this month because that is when the 21 days expired. To further tackle the nation's traffic situation and reduce accident rate, more unit commands and outposts are being established as the code declared war on life-threatening offenses. In Abuja, Aliu Tukur, NTA News. You're still watching the NTA Network News. Lagos, the center of excellence, is where we go next. Jennifer is there waiting to tell us about the digital switchover and other reports. It's over to you now, Jennifer. For me, good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Developing a well-planned roadmap for digital switch over in Nigeria will fast track infrastructural development in the country. The Director General, National Broadcasting Commission, Ishak Modibo Kawu, stated this at a media briefing ahead of the June 17th switch over to dig digital television in Lagos. Ken Igbeluge has details. Nigeria is expected to conclude its migration from analog to digital broadcasting by June 17, 2017, a process popularly referred to as digital switch over, DSO. Nigerian had either to miss out on two previous deadlines in 2012 and 2015. However, facts on ground indicate that this date may not be realistic. For instance, experts say there are still issues around set-up buses manufacturing, lack of awareness, and poor funding. The Director General National Broadcasting Commission told newsmen that the country has made giant strides in digital shift in order to achieve a seamless transition from analog to digital terrestrial television in Nigeria. Hopefully, we are going to achieve the 95% coverage of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is what the ITU expects us to do. The Director General also spoke on the country's readiness to create the much-needed awareness on the process. When we go to a particular part of the country, we're going to do a lot of saturation publicity in those places so that people in those communities can be more aware of what we're going to do. Eventually, Go TV, Star Times will have to migrate to the transmission network of any of the signal distributors of their choice. The National Broadcasting Commission also advised Nigerians not to be skeptical about the reality of the transition as the pilot in Jos and subsequent rollout in Abuja proved that the process is on course. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge and Enios. In a bid to put a check on illegal activities of car dealers, a portal has been created to facilitate security of vehicles imported into the country. The president of the Association of Motor Dealers of Nigeria, Prince Ajibola Adeoyi, disclosed this at a media briefing in Lagos. The initiative is in partnership with Media Concept International Limited. The president of the Association of Motor Dealers of Nigeria revealed that the creation of the portal will facilitate the traceability of vehicles from the point of entry. In as much as ignorance is not an excuse, but when we look at this one, that's when we came up with the concept and decided to partner with the Nigerian police so as to see how we can put a stop to it. 
and this will even reduce the amount of money and resources wasted on trying to get stolen vehicles. The Assistant Commissioner of Police of the Department of Information Communication Technology, ICT, Force Headquarters at Buja, stated that collaboration will further strengthen security measure to put a check on activities of unscrupulous car dealers in the country. So this is a very wonderful initiative by the Inspector General of Police to ensure the integration of AMDOM system with the police BCMR to enable us track stolen vehicle and to make it easy for members of the public to buy a vehicle without trouble. Car dealers are expected to log on to the website which is policebcmr.gov.ng to register their vehicles and also get necessary information on vehicles imported into the country in Lagos doing dear NT News. You're still watching NT Network News. More reports are ahead in the from Abuja with Fumi. Stay with us. Glow is in the air. It's data. It's what you use every time you download music. It's what streams movies. It's what the banks use to check your account. It's the very light blood of modern living. Data. And where does it all come from? According to industry sources, more and more of it came from here. They acknowledge that Glow is now the largest data network in Nigeria. With your own Glow One submarine cable linked seamlessly to tens of thousands of kilometers with your own fiber optic cable. Glow can provide a huge data capacity anywhere at a more flexible and affordable price than anyone. It's simple. So you see, glow is in the air. It's everywhere. Say hello to the Grandmaster. These data plans are available to all new customers and existing customers who renew their plans. Dial star triple seven hash. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. In Ramadan, every one of us starts our day with an idea in mind. An idea to share our food with the less fortunate. Some people try to hold on to it, but the day has no mercy. This time, don't just think of being a better person. Do it. Make your thoughts happen this Ramadan with Lipton. Ramadan Karim from Lipton. What happened? It was a mosquito. Oh. Oh. Daddy, here. What's happening here? Mama, mosquitoes. I sprayed, but the mosquitoes aren't dying. <laughs> no longer. Because I bought Motain Power Guard, which kills 100% mosquitoes. Motain Power Guard kills 100% mosquitoes. I can't believe she just rejected me and my camera. She rejected my lights. How can she not want makeup? Maybe when the battery dies, she'll come back to us. Nah, not with a 4,000 milliamp battery. Experience the best selfies of your life. Gioni A1 Super Selfie Super Battery. Here's your order. I think this is not exactly what we ordered. I ordered a Coca Cola Zero. No problem. I can give you zero calories, zero sugar, and a great Coca Cola taste. Here's the Coca Cola Zero you ordered. <laughs> Do it again. Uh, you still look like you need a Coca Cola. Why don't you stick inside your bag? Enjoy. You're still watching the NTA Network News. 
African leaders have been challenged to improve the plight of the African child by focusing on protection gaps and responses. This was at an event organized by the African First Lady's Peace Mission to commemorate this year's Day of the African Child. Fatima Leo reports. The day belongs to the children and the Inuit. Are those from regular schools and IDP camps across the FCT display their prowess? Africa, of whom my grandmother sings on the banks of the distant river, I have never known you, but your blood flows in my veins. UNICEF 2016 comprehensive report indicates that 70 million children in sub saharan Africa will die before their fifth birthday, and more than 60 million primary school aged children will be out of school why some 750 million women will be married as children. Representative of the wife of the president and other relevant authorities unanimously agreed that to surmount these challenges, African nations must embrace peace. The time is to act now to improve the quality of our children's life. We begin to take pragmatic steps to address some of these issues in a manner that will ensure that generation of our children yet unborn will not suffer the same fate. The cherry news, however, is that Mrs. Aisha Buari is already taking bold steps in this direction with the enrollment of about 1,500 children in the IDP camps in the FCT into regular primary and secondary schools. The Day of African Child was initiated in 1991 to honor those who were killed in Soweto uprising in 1976. In Abuja, Fatima Liu, NTA News. Muslim faithful have been enjoined to take advantage of the last 10 days of Ramadan to pray for the development of the country. The chief imam of the FCDA Jumat Musk, Abdullahi Hamad, gave the admonition in his sermon. Musa Abubakar reports. Today's sermon focuses on accepting fate and working towards overcoming personal challenges. It also admonishes on striving to overcome societal challenges, especially at times like this, when government is making concerted effort to put the country on the path of growth and development. Imam Abdullahi observed that the last 10 days of Ramadan not only offers Muslims the opportunity to seek Allah's favor, blessing and emancipation, but also intensify prayers for selves and nation. Every one of us should be kind to himself and to the country by praying or devoting himself to God, submitting himself to God so that Allah, God will answer him and he should pray and include the country in his prayer and even put the country first before him, his own self. For worshippers, the sermon offered inspiration towards spirituality and nation building. I'm going to pray hard, work hard, I live this to how much Allah. Let's look at that. If you have that benefit, you are okay. Prayers were offered for peace and unity of the country. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NT News. Meanwhile, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sahad Abubakar III, has called on Islamic clerics to always preach according to the teachings of the Holy Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet. He was speaking at the Ramadan lecture jointly organized by NTA Sakoto Network Center and the Sultanate Council in Sakoto. Sheu Muhammad Dati completes the report. The Sultan, who was represented by the district head of Gai and Umar Jepi, said synergy between religious sects bring about unity of the Muslim Umar. He have advised Islamic clerics in the country to show their differences and concentrate on the teachings of Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. While appreciating NTA Sokoto Network Center for organizing the Ramadan lecture, the Sultan described media outfits as voice of the voiceless. He pledged continuous support to the Network Center and other media outfits, praying for the entire Muslim Ummah benefit from the bounties of the holy months. The terminal of Sokoto, the Sultan of Sokoto is always appreciating the tremendous support and uh, uh, understanding that exists between the NTA Sokoto and the Sultan Council. Chairman of the occasion, Professor Asombo Wali Jr. described Ramadan lecture as vital, expressing hope that lessons learned will be adhered to even after the period. 
Zona director and he is to network center Bala Ali Uso said the lecture is meant to look at critical issues in the month of Ramadan. He said NT intends to send the lecture on an annual basis. The main lecture was delivered by Manam Ben Junedu, Dr. Shadi Savi, and Ustaz Nura Nata Allah Hosari. In Sokoto, Show Muhammad T. NTA News. Exchange of digitization expertise among NTA staff. Justice U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria supports development in River State. Mina is now Port Harcourt studio, ready to fill us in on these developments. A very good evening to you, and you're on. Welcome to Port Harcourt. With the deadline for the digital switchover drawing near in Nigeria, we need for manpower development to build necessary capacities. For a smooth switchover comes to the fore. To this end, we seem to be having some challenges with the audio coming there from Mina. And moving on now, we turn our attention to education. The leadership crisis at the Federal University Dusama in Casino State may have taken a turn for the worse. As the chairman of the governing board of the university, Dr. Marilyn Zanyan has threatened to resign over alleged pressure on her to overturn the suspension of the vice chancellor of the university, Professor Haruna Abdul Keita. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegoloye reports that this issue was brought before the House Committee on Tertiary Institutions. The board suspended the vice chancellor for six months to allow for investigations of several petitions against him alleging corruption and abuse of office. While the Minister of Education had insisted on a full investigation of the allegations, pressure from some traditional institutions and some political elite demand for the immediate reinstatement of the vice chancellor. The chairman of the board, however, insists on resigning than reinstating the suspended vice chancellor prior to a full investigation. He continued to make announcements on TV, radio, and, and personally insulting and attacking me. I am a very modest person. I have everything that has ever been written about me on the internet. But I have told all my supporters, everybody who has something to do with me, not to write anything about this issue on the internet or to respond to any provocation. I wrote letters to uh, the Honorable Minister, the first letter, stating that, look, I believe that procedures were not followed in handling the issue. I wasn't given a copy of the petition to respond, but I was asked to step aside, meaning, meaning that I was suspended. Chairman of the committee, Aminu Suleiman, and members were concerned about actions by both parties. You are procedurally wrong. He too is procedurally wrong. At the committee, he can choose to disagree, whether to continue because he has not been served, or to wait and collect and answer it if he is competent that he is not guilty. The committee will look further into the saga prior to any further legislative action to be taken. In another development, the House Ad Hoc Committee on Artifacts has heard from key parties on the issue of retrieving the nation's artifacts, some centuries old from museums and other places of custody in foreign countries. We're keeping this thing since over 200 years. The committee will report back at plenary on the best way forward. From the National Assembly, Dennis at Degenloye, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says the President Mohammed Buhari led administration is committed to taking development to all parts of the country as a deliberate way of giving all citizens a sense of belonging. The minister stated this when he visited the Oba of Isan Luisin in Kwara State. Anthony Fosen reports. The minister's visit to the palace of the Oba of Isan Luisin is in fulfillment of a promise the minister made in February to discuss the possibilities of developing the Owu Waterfalls to become a tourist attraction. As far back as 2009, the federal government had uh, made efforts to develop this road as a special intervention road. So I've asked them to uh, let me have the documents that actually this matter 
had been advertised, bidded for, and as a matter of fact, the Bureau of um, Public uh, Procurement had already issued a no objection certificate. So if I get those documents, then we see how we can revive the project. The Oba of San Luis, Oba Solomon Olubenga Oluedi, while expressing gratitude for the federal government's concern to develop the area, said the move is a demonstration of the government's desire to take development to the grassroots, hence the successes it has recorded in its two years in office. I really commend the effort of the federal government and uh, most especially promotion of uh, tourism that the Honorable Minister is moving around. Ancient town in its local government area of Kwara State, created out of Irekmodu local government in 1996, with headquarters at Ouisin. In Ouisin, Kwara State, Anthony Forson, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. More reports on the global scene and sports when we come back. The FIFA Confederations Cup Russia 2017 on Quest Sports for the fan. Reorganized, trained, and fully equipped, we are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, pipeline vandalism and other criminal activities. Be productive. Be security conscious. Join the police force to secure your life and property. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force, Force Public Relations Department. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional and international collaborations, cutting edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDAC as an agency is indeed doing so much to protect the health of our nation. I urge everyone to support NAVDAC in reading the country of fed drugs and unwholesome products. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Segment as we join Gabriel Odu on the global scene. The Queen and Prince William had visited the London Relief Center for Grenfell Tower fire victims. Reports say about 76 people are still missing and at least 30 have been confirmed dead. Emergency services are ongoing. And from the United States, President Donald Trump has confirmed that he is under investigation into alleged Russian meddling in the U.S. election. In a tweet, reports say the president also seemed to have accused the U.S. Deputy Attorney General of pursuing a witch hunt. And back home in Ethiopia, a team of archaeologists have uncovered a forgotten city believed to have dated as far back as 10th century AD. Artifacts from Egypt, India, and China have been found in the city, as well as a 12th century mox similar to those in Tanzania and Somaliland. However, in Kenya, a bomb explosion in Mandra area has left at least four people dead. Only last month, eight people were killed in two separate attacks in Mandara area. That's Global Tidbit, Gabriel Udu, NTA News. And we turn our attention to sports now. The defeat of the Super Eagles by the Bafana Bafana of South Africa for the first time in any competitive game was frailed 
by parliamentarians on NTS Sports Parliament and recommendation proffered on the way forward. Adeola Omokive monitored the program. Well, we seem not to have that ready. We now bring you a sports update as we join Ayodeji Makende. Over 200 athletes from 16 states are competing in a two-day 13 track and field event under 18 and 20 championships at the main bowl of the Abuja National Stadium as the Athletics Federation of Nigeria began the selection process for Africa Junior Championships in Algeria from July 29 to August 2. The competition, which ends Saturday, also serves as a platform to select flag bearers to the World Under-18 Championships in Kenya. By the grace of God in Kenya, I believe this often today will give us a better result. Newly elected president of Nigeria Taekwondo Federation, Margaret Binga, a retired national athlete and certified Taekwondo instructor, says domesticating competition will be the priority of the new board as they attempt a restructuring of the sport to attract talents at the grassroots. We have talent abound in this country. They can do it. Talents that, when they come on board and they are ripe enough, will be rest assured that medals will be coming into the country through Taekwondo. Attention shifts to ice cold Russia on Saturday for the kickoff of the 2017 FIFA Confederation Cup at St. Petersburg as eight teams begin hostilities in four cities till July 2. Hosts Russia play New Zealand in the opening game in which FIFA's video assistance referee technology is expected to be introduced to aid decision making process and prevent the mobbing and surrounding of referees during calls. Cameroon have the task of hoisting Africa's flag with ties against Chile, Australia and world champions Germany in Group B. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde NTA News. And a quick check on the weather forecast for tomorrow. This massive weather system gave good rainfall to the central states from the southern part of Kaduna down to the northern part of Imo State in the south. We expect cool, cozy nighttime temperatures over this entire region. And moving into Saturday morning, we expect remnant of this weather system to give morning rains to parts of Lagos, Oyo, Ogun, Niger, Kwara, and most likely, Kebi. Morning thunderstorms are also expected over the tip of the northeast, which should be aided by a weather system over eastern part of Chad Republic. We expect this storm to propagate westwards, giving rains to northern cities along its path, with the storm over the northwest expected later in the evening period. The high ground areas of the central state, Mambila Plateau, the inland areas of the southeast and the coastal areas should also witness some rains mixed with thunderstorms later in the evening period. And let's stand by for the temperature forecast. And before we go, a quick reminder that you can watch all our stories and much more when you log on to our website, www.nta.ng. And that's the NTA Network News for tonight. We thank you for watching. I am Fumi Wakama. Enjoy the rest of the weekend.